Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my series, reading Dracula by Bram Stoker. Without further ado, returning to Dracula, as read by Lord Naren White. Early this morning, a large dog, a half-bred mastiff, belonging to a coal merchant close to Tate Hill Pier, was found dead in the roadway opposite its master's yard. It had been fighting, and manifestly had had a savage opponent, for its throat was torn away, and its belly was slit open as if it was as if it with as if with a savage claw. Later, by the kindness of the Board of Trade Inspector, I have been permitted to look over the log book of the Demeter, which was in order up to within three days, but contained nothing of special interest except as to facts of missing men. The greatest interest, however, is with regard to the paper found in the bottle, which was today produced at the inquest and a more strange narrative than the two between them unfold, it has not been my lot to come across. As there is no motive for concealment, I am permitted to use them, and accordingly send you a transcript, simply omitting technical details of seamanship and supercargo. It almost seems as though the captain had been seized with some kind of mania, before he had got into a blue water, and that this had developed persistently throughout the voyage. Of course, my statement must be taken cum grana, since I am writing from the dictation of a clerk of the Russian consul, who kindly translated for me, time being short. Log of the Demeter, Varna to Whitby. Written 18 July, things so strange happening, that I shall keep accurate note henceforth till we land. On July 6th we finished taking in cargo, silver sand, and boxes of earth. At noon set sail, east wind, fresh, crew, five hands, two mates, cook, and myself, captain. On 11 July at dawn entered Bosphorus, boarded by Turkish customs officer, officers, Bakshish, all correct, underway at 4 p.m. On 12 July through Dardanelles, more customs officers and flag boat of guarding squadron, Bakshish again, works of officers thorough but quick. Want us off soon, at dark passed into Archipelago. On 13 July passed Cape Matapan. Crew dissatisfied about something. Seemed scared, but would not speak out. On 14 July was somewhat anxious about crew. Men all steady fellows, who sailed with me before. Mate could not make out what was wrong. They only, they only told him that there was something and crossed themselves. Mate lost temper with one of them that day and struck him. Expected fierce quarrel, but all was quiet. On 16 July, Mate reported in the morning that one of the crew, Petrovsky, was missing. Could not account for it. Took larboard wa watch eight bells last night. Was relieved by Amramov, but did not go to bunk. Men more downcast than ever. All said that they expected something of the kind, but would not say more than there was something aboard. Made getting very impatient with them. Feared some trouble ahead. On 17 July, yesterday, one of the men, Olgarin, came to my cabin and, in an awestruck way, confided to me that he thought there was a strange man 
aboard the ship. He said that in his watch he had been sheltering behind the deckhouse as there was a rainstorm. When he saw a tall, thin man, who was not like any of the crew, come up the companionway and go along the deck forward and disappear. He followed cautiously, but when he got to Bose found no one, and the hatchways were all closed. He was in a panic of superstitious fear, and I am afraid the panic may spread. To allay it, I shall today search the entire ship carefully, from stem to stern. Later in the day, I got, the, got together the whole crew and told them, as they evidently thought there was someone in the ship, we would search from stem to stern. First mate angry, said it was folly, and to yield such foolish ideas would demoralize the men. Said he would engage to keep them out of trouble with the hand spike. I let him take the helm, while the rest began a thorough search. All keeping abreast with lanterns, we left no corner unsearched. As there were only the big wooden boxes, there were no odd corners where a man could hide. Men were much, men much relieved when search over and went back to work cheerfully. First mate scowled, but said nothing. 22 July Rough weather last three days, and all hands busy with sails, no time to be frightened. Men seem to have forgotten their dread, mate cheerful again, and all on good terms. Praise men for work in bad weather, past Gibraltar and out through straits, all well. 24 July There seemed some doom over the ship, already a hand short, and entering the Bay of Biscay with wild weather ahead, and yet last night another man lost disappeared like the first, came off his watch and was not seen again. Men all in a panic of fear sent a round robin asking to have double watch as they fear to be alone. Mate angry. Fear there will be some trouble as either he or the men will do some violence. 28 July Four days in hell, knocking about in a sort of maelstrom, and the wind a tempest. No sleep for anyone. Men all worn out. Hardly know how to set a watch, since no one fit to go on. Second mate volunteered to steer and watch, and let men snatch a few hours sleep. Wind abating. Seas still terrific but feel them less, as ship is steadier. 29 July, another tragedy. Had single watch tonight, as crew too tired to double. When morning watch came on deck, could find no one except steersmen. Raised outcry and all came on deck. Thorough search, but no one found. Are now without second mate, and crew in a panic. Mate and I agreed to go armed henceforth, and wait for any sign of cause. 30 July Last night, rejoiced we are nearing England. Weather fine, all sails set. Retired, worn out, slept soundly, awakened by mate telling me 
that both man of watch and steersman missing, only self and mate and two hands left to work ship. One August, two days of fog and not a sail sighted, had hoped when in the English Channel to be able to signal for help or get in somewhere, not having power to work sails, have to run before wind. We'll go ahead and stop there for this week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care, and thanks again.